all species in Texas are connected in some way. And once we start losing the endemic species of Texas, we start losing that heritage that we want to pass on to future generations. My name is Meredith Longoria, and I'm the non-game and rare species program leader at Texas Parks and Wildlife. I work on the policy end of things to protect the rare, threatened, and endangered species of Texas. Meredith is not afraid to fight the hard fights. The list of policy accomplishments that she has and the things that she's got approved by the commission and the regulatory changes, I struggle to think of other people in her position that have had uh, that many sort of policy successes. We have over 1,300 species on our list of species of greatest conservation need associated with the Texas Conservation Action Plan. There was no really clear standard process for adding species to the list or removing them from the list. And each taxa specialist, so there are ornithologists, our botanists, our mammologists, etc., had to do the best they could uh, based on the data they could find to come up with their own way of determining when a species should be added or removed. They live all in this watercress and gravel. Best way to find them. The current process makes it completely objective. We have a calculator system that we plug all of our data into, and the system calculates whether or not it should be listed as threatened or endangered. That helps us identify where we need to direct our resources in order to get ahead of the need for species to be added to the federal list of threatened or endangered species. I said, can I cut that one down? You said, yes. I said, can I cut all these down, that whole bunch of them? And you said, yeah, yeah, you go ahead and do that, Richard. <laughs> we have a unique relationship with landowners in Texas in which they come to us for technical guidance, and that gives us the opportunity to point out the unique features on their property and the unique species that exist there because of their hard work. One of the biggest misconceptions about adding species to the state list is that it's going to prevent landowners from doing what they want to do on their property, and that's just not true. There are no land use restrictions associated with the state threatened species list. At this point, we let them disperse on their own and we begin our daily tracking. A prime example is the Texas horn lizard. Many people have fond memories from when they were kids of the Texas horn lizard and would love to have them on their properties. It's not something to be afraid of, it's something to be proud of when you have a rare species on your property. It means that you've been a good land steward and that you have something special to protect and to pass on the future generations of Texans.